Hey, Ralph here. Uh, welcome back to the uh, Moodle Tip of the Week. Uh, this week we're going to be uh, looking at creating uh, drag and drop questions in Moodle and some tips and tricks on how to do that effectively. Uh, you know, it's a uh, it's a nice question format, good way to test students other than multiple choice and true false. So let's go ahead and take a uh, go ahead and get started here. Hold on. All right. So as a uh, as an example here, you know there are in my, uh, you know, my courseware, and then also on the web, you know, from time to time, you'll run into a table, okay? a table that um, you say, hey, that would be a great way to test my students or use that as a uh, tool to grow their knowledge. You know, so we'll take, for example, here we have the, um, this is the 802.11 or Wi-Fi uh, wiki page. And on this page, there's this very detailed tables about different frequencies and modulations between some of the different uh, 802.11 uh, technologies. So I'm going to kind of drag that table over here to the side so I still have access to it. But let's look at taking that that table information and then converting it into a drag and drop question. So here's the process. I'm going to go ahead and I'm out of my Moodle cloud site here. I'll jump out on my demo course. And then on the demo course here, I'm going to come down here to my question bank. Now, uh, again, I'm pretty big on trying to maintain a uh, level of uh, organization with the questions. And so I will typically put, you know, drag and drop or some of the other question types. I'll, I'll separate them out from my, uh, my multiple choice or, you know, my true false questions and things like that. So normally what I would do first off is I would create a category. Let's say that this is going to be under module four, and then I'll say, let's say uh, M4 uh, drag and drop as an example. So again, I highly recommend that you maintain a level of organization and structure with your questions. It's going to make your life a lot easier. I mean, I have courses that have uh, thousands of questions in the in the pools of questions and so <laughs> organization is an important thing so now I'll come back here to my questions and then on my uh, questions uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select my category here so this is module four, drag and drop and then simply just select to uh, create a new question alright so this is gonna be a drag and drop into text mm -hmm. and I'll go ahead and select add uh, give it a name. Let's say uh, 802.11. Drag and drop. Uh, again, making it easy for me to see that this is a drag and drop question. Though the way it's displayed, that'll be easy as well. All right. So first up, you know, you want to make sure that um, you know this is formatted nicely. And one of the nice things about here in the uh, Moodle editor here is that I can drop this into a table. So the first thing I do is usually throw a large heading on there and say drag and drop. And then one more large heading and I'll say you know, 802.11 Wi-Fi, something. All right, now from here, I'm going to go ahead and build my table. So let's see, I'm going to do, let me count them off. One, two, three, four, uh, four columns. And let's say one, two, three, four, five rows. So five rows, four columns. Now here, we have the caption that will appear at the top of the table, or typically at the top. And so I'll set that to the top. Now in my case, I'm going to have headers at both the row and the column, so I'll go ahead and select both. So there we have our, our table. Now I'll go ahead and select Create, and there I have the table. Now first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add in my static text. So I'm going to do 802.11a, 802.11b, 802.11, well actually my top header here, this is going to be the actual 
dot eleven protocol. It's my header, and then down here we'll say a b c d. Now the categories that I'm going to test my students on include the frequency. We'll do frequency. We'll do um, eh, what else we want to do? So we'll do frequency. Let's do um, data rate. And lastly, the modulation technique. And again, I'm just pulling this off the table. Now, the frequency for um, 802.11a is generally uh, going to be 5. And I'm going to do that as my first answer. Okay. Now, B, and this is supposed to be a G, sorry. <laughs> I should look at my table. And B is going to be uh, 2.4. A, B, G, and this should be an N. I need to pay more attention. G is also uh, going to be uh, 2.4. So it's going to have the same answer. So to do these variable answers, you do bracket, bracket, and then a numerical value. And I'll show you that in a second. And then N is 2.4 and 5. So that's going to be a different answer. And so that's going to be answer 3. Now, I'm going to come down here to my table and... The answer to five is, or excuse me, the answer to choice one should be five, five gigahertz. I don't know if I want to put the units in there um, just because that could make it a little bit easier from a drop and drag standpoint. Now, choice two is going to be 2.4, and then choice three here is going to be 2.4 slash five. Now, one of the things I always do with these questions, okay, one of the things you're always going to want to do from my perspective, unless you got like a binary choice, like yes, no, is you want to shuffle your answers so it'll randomize where the little drop drag items are. And the other thing is if the same answer, if you have the same answer for multiple, you have to make sure you check the unlimited button or else it's once you drop it once, it won't be available anymore. I often will do unlimited on all of them, even if there aren't multiple answers for that, just to sort of... Uh, keep it a little trickier for the students, you know, and so they just don't know. Sometimes you don't want that, um, but there are times when you, uh, when you in fact do. So data rate, uh, so the data rate, looking at the table here, uh, 54 megabits per second. So this is going to be uh, answer four. For A, the data rate for B is 11 megabits per second, so that's a different answer, so that's going to be answer five. Oops, excuse me. 5 and then G uh, is in fact also 54 so that's going to repeat answer 4 make sure you keep things straight here so this is answer 4 is 54 and answer 5 is 11 now there's a number of different data rates that are listed in my table for N I'm just going to go ahead and pick uh, 135 whoops so that's going to be answer 6 and again, 135. Now you'll see that I'm out of answers here, but you just hit the button here, blank for three more lines, and that will continue. And again, don't forget if you're gonna go with that sort of unlimited theme, that you kind of continue that. Uh, again, that's required if you're gonna have the same answer for multiple. Now in order for this to, uh, I think what I wanna do here, since I'm not listing, I'm gonna put my units uh, up here So they don't have to worry too much about that. And you can add additional spacing here just to kind of keep it clean. All right, so now we have our modulation technique. Modulation technique for A is orthogonal frequency direct modulation, or OFDM. So that's going to be a new answer. So that'll be 7. Um, B uses direct sequence spread spectrum. Okay, So that's going to be 8. And G also uses OFDM, so that's again going to repeat that answer 7. And then N, based on the information here in my table, is MIMO OFDM, so that'll be a new answer. So again, I'll make that 9. So come down here, we've got OFDM. 
uh, direct sequence spread spectrum. And then finally, MIMO OFDM. And again, I'll go ahead and select unlimited. Now, you can add distractors here, right? If I say blank for three more lines, I can start adding distractors that don't actually have answers. Uh, that's perfectly legit to do if you want to uh, distract your uh, students. Okay. And uh, whatever you want to put in there. I, I added a couple numbers there. Uh, again, make sure they don't match your actual answers. Um, and yeah, throw one more in there. We'll throw a thousand in there. All right, so now we have our question built. Okay, there's a option there for default mark. Again, I like the table format, keeps things nice and uh, easy to deal with. You know, if I come down here, click on the table, you'll see here that I've got the option to edit my table, delete rows. So if you need to do any, if you didn't count your rows or columns correctly, you know, you can click inside your table and then uh, click on a little table icon in the editor there. If I say edit table, yeah, don't need to make any changes there. So then I'm going to go ahead and uh, save my changes. And then I'll preview my question. So I'll go ahead and click on the little preview button here. That would be that guy right there. And then there we have it. That's what my question is going to look like. So it makes it easy to deal with. So. 2.4, 2.4, 5, 2.4 and 5, data rate for A, 54, 54, 11, 135, modulation techniques. It's a good idea to preview it, answer all your questions, uh, and then uh, say submit and finish and make sure you see all green checks because <laughs> it's easy you know to make mistakes when you're doing it but then it's just bracket bracket number and then close your brackets uh, really easy to work with it's a really nice way to take information that's been presented to the student in a table format and then convert it into a question that's uh, a good way to uh, you know test their understanding so drop and drag uh, into text, or excuse me, drag and drop into text uh, is a very effective and uh, easy way to uh, test students' uh, understanding, competency. Uh, creating the questions is not difficult. I do highly recommend that you use the table option. Now on some sites, okay, so for example, if I go out to uh, my other Moodle site here, and let me just click on a class here. I just want to show you this real quickly. If I go into my question bank here, and I'll select create new question, and we'll say drag and drop into text. I'll go ahead and select add. When I get into the text, depending on your editor and your site, when you go into the table editor, you may actually be able to put borders around the table. Uh, so this is on my, my main site here, but you'll see here that I also get this appearance on the bottom here. And so I almost always do this. I always almost draw a line around each cell. Uh, I use a solid border, usually anywhere from like three to five uh, pixels in depth and set the color to black. You know, and what that makes for is a very, very distinct uh, table uh, that the users or the students can drop and drag into. So if you get that appearance option, you know, a lot of times I do recommend that you actually uh, create, you know, that that border around the table. Again, it just makes life a little easier for uh, for the student. But don't forget the shuffle option. Uh, don't forget the unlimited, uh, especially if you if it's the same answer for multiple um, drag and drops, uh, because I've had that happen before where I create it and then the students say I can't answer the question. And so uh, keep an eye eye out for making uh, that mistake so the easiest way to do it is right after you create the question run the preview test the question and then that'll give you a good idea about uh, you know whether or not you're doing things effectively I've create I mean I create large drop and drags I create small drop and drags 
A uh, little bit word of warning if you're creating a very, very large drop and drag question. I can kind of show you a quick example there. Let me go into a uh, different course. So let me pull up my question bank here. And let's find one here. So this is a fairly large uh, drop and drag. It's not, certainly not the largest one that I've ever created uh, by a long stretch, but certain students, and I guess the point that I want to make here uh, with these larger drop and drags is that there are times when it will, you know, especially when students have a relatively lower powered uh, PC uh, where they do run into some issues where it freezes or the drop and drags are slow. So the larger and the more complex, it seems to be the more uh, feedback I get from students that uh, they start having these types of events and that can be a little bit of a frustrating thing so um, you know you may want to experiment a little bit with that and you know create larger and more complex uh, drop and drags you know over uh, over time for that but it is a very easy uh, question format to work with and it is also a very effective way of having a student you know take information that they've seen presented in a table like format and then you know converting it to assessing and helping them with the uh, the knowledge transfer piece. I uh, hope that helped and we'll see you back for the next tip.